Hello everyone, welcome back to DNH TV. I'm Chris Phillips. Thank you so much for joining us today. Today we're going to be talking about modernizing your server foothold and transitioning your customers to AMD Azure. And to do that, I got two guests joining me today. We got Sean and Nick from AMD. Sean, Nick, how's it going, guys? It's going great. So excited to be here. Awesome. Oh, yeah. I don't want to waste any time, Sean. So uh, why don't you kick things off and uh, uh, get started? Awesome, awesome. So hi everybody, this is Sean Kerr. I'm based in Houston. I work for AMD in the Cloud Business Group. Really excited to talk to you guys about an opportunity to optimize uh, your environments on AMD and Azure, uh, and for, whether it be for modernization from on-premise to the cloud. So I have a few topics I wanna make sure that we cover today. I have a number of slides. Uh, and so uh, we're gonna cover AMD, itself in our kind of our portfolio in the in the data center we're going to talk about our growth trajectory and what it means for customers then we're going to talk about our collaboration with microsoft azure so what are what are the highlights of our partnership where do we play well uh, what are some of the vms and services that are offered and then we'll leave you with some resources to go and take action on this knowledge that you're going to learn today so first let's let's take a look at amd um, so AMD in, in the data center, our customers are finding themselves with more challenges than ever before, um, from adapting to rapidly changing business conditions to keeping up with their increasing workload demands. And so AMD offers tremendous value to data center customers as a trusted leader for accelerating performance with a leading and consistent roadmap of, of compute products. And so we have leadership architecture to, to deliver performance, and we uh, are delivering uh, year in and year out uh, consistent and meaningful improvements in our products. And so uh, what does this mean from a portfolio standpoint? Today, I'm gonna talk mostly about the Epic line on the far left-hand side, which is around general purpose computing. We have a vast portfolio of products from GPUs to adaptive computing um, solutions to enable customers uh, cloud service providers and enterprise customers to get the best out of their investment with AMD. So we have a, a really differentiated, unique set of solutions. Today, I'm gonna to focus on the Epic line. And so Epic, you know, what, what are the three kind of main high level takeaways about Epic? First of all, we are the world's fastest data center CPU. Uh, second, we offer transformative energy efficiency. So for customers with sustainability, To, to have more efficient infrastructure, whether it be for their on-premise environment to, to do more performance per footprint of space, or whether it be in the cloud, you know, doing more work um, per watt. Uh, and then finally is leadership TCO. So we deliver excellent economies for the, for the cloud service providers, and they're able to pass along those cost savings to end customers. And on top of that, we deliver leadership class performance. So that, that translates to a terrific TCO for end customers. We'll get into that a little bit here. And let's look at, you know, kind of where we've been on our, our journey. So we introduced the Epic line back in 2017, about six years ago. Uh, so this, this slide isn't even big enough to encompass that Epic line. Um, we've, we're, we're gonna start just in general, where, where we really got our foothold in the, the data center market. And we have you know, kind of a view of within Azure specifically, what are some of the services that they started adopting? Um, so they, they kind of took on the general purpose, GPU optimized types of instances. And that portfolio um, of AMD CPUs has continued to grow year in and year out. So we've transitioned to our third generation, Milan, where you know the broad base of our solutions are deployed on, and now we're in our fourth generation, uh, which is called codenamed Genoa. So you're gonna see a number of products coming out uh, around Genoa. As there have been some that have already been announced, such as the HPC line in Azure, and we'll continue to see more around confidential computing and, and general purpose products as well in Azure. And so we're gonna, we're gonna continue to grow our portfolio of CPU offerings so that we can enable our CSPs to get greater value from their AMD investment and to pass on that value to their end customers. And then, you know, I think a really telling part of the AMD story is to look at not just that portfolio and that consistent execution over time, 
but how are we growing not only our revenue, but also our market share? Uh, so this is a view from an analyst report uh, very recently showing, you know, we were growing from low single digits and, and market share. Now we're, according to this report, 30% uh, for server CPUs, and we continue to expect that that uh, curve to go up and to the right for us. Uh, and that's, you know, it's not a fluke that this is happening. We're delivering consistently great products to our customers, and you know, we expect to 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 be the market share leader, you know, in in the coming years. So, um, and then how is this manifesting for uh, CSPs? So a lot of the, the technologies that you use day in and day out, like Cloud 365 and Teams and, and others are running on Epic and you don't even know it. Uh, so the CSPs themselves are seeing terrific performance and TCO benefit of using Epic. And then they're, they're deploying Epic for their own products that they offer, offer to end customers. So you'll see the, the vast array of cloud service providers who have uh, AMD Epic based offerings. And we're up to 600 plus instances uh, now, and that just continues to grow. So now let's get into AMD in Azure. Um, so uh, looking at the partnership from a bird's eye view, we have a very tight collaboration with Azure on the product side in terms of developing, you know, our CPUs for the precise needs of Azure's internal usage, as well as for their end customers. We collaborate closely on engineering uh, to eke out most performance possible for their top applications. So, you know, on things like SQL or, um, you know, other kind of enterprise workloads. We're working closely with them to, to get the best performance we can. And then we work closely on a, on a co-selling and co-marketing standpoint as well. So that we deliver to customers, you know, we, uh, the best performance possible at the best value. Um, and we, we've provided Azure with the tools from a technology standpoint to go and uh, win in, in a wide array of product or, or uh, workload categories such as high performance computing, big data analytics, databases, and ERPs, and, and really uh, a wide array of general IT types of environments. And, and what that helps for uh, Azure and end customers is to, to save money, um, both OpEx, uh, mostly OpEx from the end customer point of view, but also from Azure's point of view, uh, CapEx. So, uh, you'll see in the coming slides that the Azure uh, AMD VMs are, are priced at anywhere from 10 to 45% lower price. So those are immediate cost savings, these tight economic times um, to deliver just you know, great value. Um, now looking at the right-hand side, from a uh, product standpoint of what we've designed into Azure, we, we now have 18 unique VM types, and I'll go into the specifics of those in, in a minute here, but these are deployed in, across 30 regions around the globe. So customers can, can find regions where you know, they have virtual machines nearby so you can minimize latency and um, you know, get kind of uh, the redundancy as well within a, a given region. Uh, that they might expect as well. So they don't have to confine themselves to one site, they can go to multiple sites. Um, AMD's also been designed for a number of Azure services that you uh, that, that customers are regularly using like Azure Databricks or Azure Data Explorer or Azure Kubernetes service or even SQL Server, IaaS. So, um, and there's more and more that I haven't mentioned and this list continues to grow as well. So Azure themselves is looking to AMD as a, as a valuable option to uh, provide um, kind of the, the technology basis for their customers to get the most out of the Azure for first party properties. And, and so with that, um, I'm gonna go ahead, you know, and summarize this really. So why are customers choosing AMD and Azure? It's really these four criteria here, performance, choice, user experience, and economies. So let's look 
uh, real quick at performance. So um, you can see here, with, I mentioned that AMD is currently in our fourth generation of product. You can look at a kind of an industry standard benchmark called Spec Int, uh, and you see that our product is 3x the performance of our competitors' uh, top of stack product uh, for their third generation product, which is in market. And our uh, top of stack third generation product is 1.4x of the competitors' top of stack third gen product. So, really um, meaningful performance, uh, competitive performance benefit for choosing AMD. And this also can be seen through our world records that we have. You see uh, our, our records span technical apps, like those of, that are um, proxies for high performance computing, data management apps, like for relational databases and unstructured data analytics, business apps, like for SAP and um, energy efficiency scores, and then infrastructure for things like VDI uh, and others. So. 300 world records and counting. From a, an efficiency standpoint, which is increasingly becoming important for our customer base that we're seeing, they're asking, you know, how can we choose options that are more sustainable, better for the earth? And, and AMD also delivers in that aspect. So we have the most efficient x86 CPUs to help to bring down, um, you know, energy usage or rather to be uh, more efficient with our CPUs. So uh, you see here our top of stack Genoa offering is 2.6x our competitors and our current gen third, third gen Epic is 2.2x. So just a terrific opportunity for, for energy efficiency conscious customers who are looking you know, for an immediate opportunity to reduce their, their emissions, they can, they can convert to AMD and uh, see a, a great benefit for their cloud efficiencies. And just to kind of look at this from uh, you know, a data center perspective, if you compare our competitors, uh, you know, the, the amount of servers needed to do a, a given amount of work. So in this case, the, the amount of work is a, a score of 8,500 for this industry standard spec int. It would require 15 servers from our competitor versus five servers from AMD. So not only is this a uh, cost reduction from uh, you know, the server infrastructure, it's also a, a space consolidation uh, play. So this, this frees up new capital for other investments, uh, for other workloads. And then it also, you know, um, helps from an emission standpoint. So there's a few equivalencies that you can see here, such as, you know, five passenger cars not driven for a year or 2,800 pounds of coal not burned, um, or, you know, 30 acres of U.S. forests um, annually. So uh, the, just a terrific story here. And it, while this is a proxy um, from on-premise, you can also expect with Azure themselves that they see efficiencies for using AMD within their own data center. Um, so, so it's a really compelling uh, energy efficiency story. And you know, another way to look at this as well, you see um, our competitors on the ARM side um, and even on Intel saying, you know, purporting to have the greatest performance per watt. Um, so here, what you can see is a benchmark called spec power, where it uh, shows the performance of, of a CPU over different loads. So 50%, 70%, all the way up to 100% load. And what we did here is we measured how much um, processing would be needed, how much time would be needed to achieve a given uh, result. In this case, it's 75 million server-side Java ops. So for AMD, you can see that we are running our CPUs at a significantly lower amount of time uh, versus our competition here. Um, so not only do we get um, you know, less time, that also can translate to less costs for end users. So um, you know, energy efficiency, is a function of not only the wattage consumed, but also the amount of time. 
So in this case, our product offers 23% lower uh, energy efficiency versus our competition. So that's another just another way to look at energy efficiency um, from a you know how much performance can you get per watt and how you to get a given level of performance. Okay, so we're going to pivot here uh, from sustainability. Uh, types of topics over to security. So, you know, more and more security is on the mind of enterprises, especially uh, those in regulated industries like government or financial services or healthcare. And so AMD offers, uh, you know, some compelling features that enable customers to protect their data, not just while it's at rest or while it's uh, in transit, but also while the data is being used. So there are um, a number of, of features that help to enable this, including uh, what AMD calls SEV, SMP, Secure Encrypted Virtualization, Secure Nested Paging. So this is a lot of, of words to say that uh, we were able to encrypt data while it's being processed. And we're able in the cloud to help isolate virtual machines from the administrators. So Customers can feel confident that their data is completely um, secure uh, and, and isolated from, from administrators and also isolated from noisy neighbors, those other tenants on the servers who are, who are using virtual machines at the same time. Um, and, you know, a really great thing about this is that you can buy, you can rent um, virtual machines with this capability. There's a modest, very modest premium for doing so and you pay effectively no penalty on performance for doing this. So um, we ran a number of tests on standard benchmarks like server-side Java and, and spec and spec FP. And you can see that most of the time we're within 2% of kind of the standard virtual machines, which, which do not have this SEV, SMP capability. So it's really, compelling, you get effectively all the same amount of performance, additional security benefit uh, at about a, only nine to 10% um, higher price tag. So uh, it really gives a nice option for those financial services, healthcare, regulated industries. Okay, so let's uh, look here, excuse me, sorry about that. Let's um, look here at kind of our evolution in, in Microsoft. Uh, so I mentioned that Epic has been around for uh, four generations now, and we've seen our portfolio blossom over this time. So Microsoft made their initial investment in AMD in about 2018, where they um, chose us to run their storage optimized and high performance computing offerings. Uh, as we go forward, now we offer uh, just a ton of virtual machine families from high performance computing, storage optimized to general purpose and, and, and memory optimized computing. And so really the story here is that Microsoft continues to see value in AMD. They, they're redoubling their investment in AMD um, and, and deploying more and more instance types as we continue to refresh our generations. So let's get to the very basics of uh, AMD in Azure, and a lot of a lot of people ask, you know, how do I know that I'm getting a virtual machine that's powered by AMD Epic? Uh, and really, the secret is to look for the A in the name. So where you see an A, and here are a few examples: the NVAS V5, BAS V5, etc. That denotes that you're getting a virtual machine with an AMD processor in it. There are still some exceptions based on older generations of, of instances, uh, but for the most part, you can look for the A where you see the A, you can safely assume that there's AMD Epic in those instances. And you know, here's just a bird's eye view of the portfolio of instances that are available. Um, I won't go into great detail on these, but you can see that it's a broad portfolio to address a wide array of needs. And so uh, let's look at, um, again, I was just talking about security from an AMD processor standpoint. 
Let's look at examples of confidential computing in, in the cloud that we're seeing a lot of today. So one of those is in the financial services. So you can imagine there's a ton of sensitive data, um, both for kind of analyzing the market as well as securing, you know, PII uh, for customers. So credit records, financial records. Um, there's also kind of anti-money laundering or uh, risk assessment and qualification. And then, you know, as well as in government, you know, uh, IP, classified data, et cetera, and, and financial services and healthcare, similar things. So a lot of patient data, um, you know, insurance, uh, analytics opportunities here for this. So I just wanted to kind of highlight a few of the scenarios that we're seeing for this. And um, AMD has uh, designed in with Azure uh, the opportunity to utilize confidential VM, for example, um, Azure Virtual Desktop. So if you have customers or who are running uh, virtual desktop infrastructure in Azure, they can run that on confidential virtual machines, um, you know, as, as an option. As if they have databases, so SQL Server, for example, they can run those on confidential virtual machines, protect, have an extra, you know, level of security on that um, database that they're running. Uh, the same with containers. So if they have container workloads that they want to have an extra layer of security for, they can run these on the uh, confidential virtual machines as well. Uh, I want to highlight a uh, shift here to a different scenario that we're seeing a lot of, and I mentioned uh, desktop as a service and virtual desktop infrastructure. AMD has some really compelling offerings for, for uh, desktop as a service. So uh, we're, what we're seeing is there's a growing demand for compute. Um, all the way from kind of the low end uh, of task workers who are doing data entry or perhaps, you know, need some office productivity tools, all the way up to the very high end of user who's, you know, doing workstation design uh, types of scenarios. So AMD has offerings to address really this broad spectrum of, of needs here. So um, for example, on the task worker and knowledge worker side, perhaps they're, you know, doing um, collaborative apps, video conferencing, um, you know, perhaps they're doing some graphics rich uh, web website um, work. Uh, these are really well suited for the general purpose instances that we have. We also have an offering that has AMD be partitioned. So what that enables is customers can get a fraction of a GPU so that the precise amount of GPU that they need for, for perhaps video or design types of workflows. So they can do a quarter of a GPU, a half of a GPU, or a full GPU, depending on the, the workload requirement. And then the, the cost of that scales according to the amount of GPU partitioning that they, that they choose. So it's really nice. It's a way to kind of hit the sweet spot for customers giving their precise workload needs. And, uh, you know, these are nice for, you know, applications like Adobe or Autodesk, um, which can really take advantage of that GPU, but, you know, don't always need that full GPU to get the most out of the experience. Another uh, product offering slash solution offering that I wanted to highlight is around big data analytics. So Azure Databricks, we're seeing you know, a ton of customers who have kind of data lake environments, multiple types of file formats that are coming in and uh, you know, a vast data pipeline that they need to address. And so um, AMD in Azure uh, is enabled for uh, general purpose virtual machines as well as storage optimized and memory optimized virtual machines for really all phases of the data pipeline, whether it's ingestion, whether it's preparing the data or, or serving the data and then visualizing it, as I just mentioned before. So this is a, a terrific option for these types of big data analytics scenarios 
And let's just look at, you know, the proof of that. How do we know that it's a good option? Well, we have benchmark results that we work with Azure Databricks to generate of, uh, you know, comparing versus our previous generation, which already had great performance. Uh, in Databricks, uh, customers can run on the latest LASV3 virtual machine and see anywhere from up to 5.3x improvement of uh, using AMD. So uh, compared with that previous generation, the price between these two virtual machines is exactly the same. So you can see gen over gen due to the AMD technology making just significant improvements. Uh, customers can see an immediate at the same price point, immediate 5.3x improvement. Um, so this this is the type of value, gen over gen, that we're able to see. Now, the, this does also take into effect some software optimization that happened. But even if you don't uh, get that software um, called Photon enabled, you can also just, without that, you get a 1.4x improvement simply by upgrading to AMD uh, third generation based instances. And so let's let's kind of take a look here. I mentioned a few examples where we have you know great affinity, and these are kind of good, easy wins on Epic. But let's let's look you know at some more examples of you know how AMD can add value in the Azure Cloud. So uh, one one play that we have that we're doing a lot is migration and modernization. So these are on-premise to cloud environments. Um, so I mentioned before, you know, uh, simply going to AMD uh, and choosing to, to go on AMD can provide customers with a 10% to 45% better uh, cost profile simply by going to AMD. Um, so this, you know, is both a kind of a, a optimization play, a cost optimization play, as well as a, a modernization play. And then on high performance computing, uh, we have a play where we're seeing a tons of customers burst their environments to the to the cloud, and so we have you know leadership offerings there as well. Um, and so let's this um, is kind of a list. I won't go through all of these, but I'll leave this with you all of where we see success um, today and kind of a where to hunt guide um, here. So. Uh, you'll see, you know, anywhere from general IT to product R&D to virtual desktop infrastructure. Um, here are kind of the, the types of solutions that you can go and position that are powered by AMD, uh, where, you know, and, and also where we have a number of resources around to help to support your pursuits as well. Uh, so this is a, an even longer list here, so I won't go through this in great detail. But what I would really... Um, like to get feedback from you all on is what are you guys seeing from your customers? Um, you know, uh, in terms of virtual machines, in terms of workloads, um, what software are they running? What workloads are they running? Um, and how can AMD help uh, to you guys to, to help sell to your customers? Um, so this is this is a big long list of where we um, have been successful and where we're seeing a lot of opportunity in the cloud, but we'd really like to collaborate with you to, to help to, to optimize your customers' environments with AMD. And we have just a rich uh, and vast uh, amount of content available to help you guys to sell. And so, um, oops, I don't know why I did that, sorry about that. Um, so, uh, so I'll, I'll just leave this behind with you guys. We have case studies across virtually any industry that you may find your customers in, um, whether it be life sciences or automotive or manufacturing. Oops, I'm sorry, this is not timing, or, or even um, uh, universities and others. Um, and so uh, as well, we have uh, a, a vast amount of literature. And then, um, so it looks like this is just wanting me to move on. <laughs> uh, from a pricing uh, comparison point of view here, I'll, I'll leave this with you guys as well. You can see that our offerings here uh, are anywhere from 10 to even 50% lower priced. Um, so here's kind of a, a cheat sheet of when you see, um, you know, other VM offerings, here's how you can go uh, 
uh, convert them over to A and and here's kind of the price benefit that you would see as a result of doing so. We also have a number of tools available. So uh, there's a selector tool that Azure has developed with us uh, to help to kind of characterize the environment needed. So anything from the speeds and feeds of how many cores you need, how much memory, what types of workloads are you running, uh, et cetera. It can help you to size the environment and to choose the, the virtual machine that's most optimal for that environment. You can also look at the regional availability to make sure that your um, zone that, that the VM needs to go in is available. Um, and then I mentioned a couple of the other resources like case studies, and we also have a partner page where you can get more information on the products. So what I would uh, ask you all to do is to, you know, please take a look at the collateral that we have here. I just ran through a few scenarios very quickly. It was a ton of information, um, but uh, there's you know, some really strong affinity between Microsoft and AMD and, and you know, a number of kind of easy wins with AMD and Azure. Um, so, but, and we have resources to help you to go and to sell and deliver great value to your customers for those scenarios. Um, and so, but please also let us know where you're seeing customer demand and how AMD can help to enable you with sales. And so uh, we, we have a resource list here. So Nick on the line uh, can help you guys to get in, in touch with the right folks to help to enable your sales. And so with that, um, I have completed the presentation and thank you very much for your time and uh, look forward to working with you all in the future. Yeah, thanks for the thanks for the information there, uh, Sean. That was a lot of great information. If, if you have any more questions and you want to reach out to someone at DNH directly about clouds, uh, cloud and, and uh, uh, AMD Azure, uh, it is modern solutions at dnh.com. Any of the those members will be happy to, to speak to you about that. So uh those are the people you can reach out to uh resources are down there to to find their contact information uh but again sean thank you so much for your time and your knowledge today uh it's greatly appreciated yeah thank you guys really appreciate it thanks guys take it easy